What's up? You glad to be here? Anybody? Very. Yeah? All right. Well, um, I'm glad that you're here. You made it through the rain, and it's, I, it never stopped the whole day. I don't understand, but anyways. Um, have you ever seen somebody and you thought, how in the world did you get yourself into that position? Um, okay, I'll give you an example. Yesterday, I saw a list, okay? It was a long list of people that weighed over 1,000 pounds. Yeah, a long, it was a big list, surprising, okay. Uh, and I was like, how do you get to that point? I mean, over a thousand pounds, that is like 15 stormies, okay. Um, in fact, there was a couple of people that were uh, over 1,500 pounds, okay. So like, that would mean we could fill an entire section of like, these people are on the front row, okay. Like you could just multiply them and fill the whole section and it would still not weigh as much as that person. That is insane. Like how do you get there? Like, okay, I understand how you get there. Eating, okay, that, that I understand. But like how do you let that happen? Like at some point do you not notice? Like, well, I'm 400 pounds overweight. I'll keep going, okay. And at some point you get to, I mean, this is serious. They can't get out of bed anymore. They're like, well... I have to go to the bathroom on myself. Should I lose weight? Give me a Krispy Kreme. Like, what? <laughs> Seriously, come on. Like, at some point you would think. In fact, there's this one of them. I, I read this article. He started having health problems. Go figure. And uh, in order to get him out of his house to the hospital, they had to cut down a wall in his house, get a forklift, and raise his bed up to put it onto a truck. Because he, <laughs> they had to use heavy machinery to get this guy out of his house. And like, okay, but he got there. Like, he, at one point, he was, a, you know, he was not that way. And so... Like, how did you get there? Um, I see this a lot. And when I was a teacher, I was a band director, and so I had to do ineligibility checks, which is where you make sure they're passing, because if they march and they're not passing, you get disqualified from UIL. It's in sports and all that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I had to check and make sure everyone in the band was eligible. And I looked in this one kid, and in English class, he had a 15. A 15. I was like, how does that happen? Now, some of you are like, I can tell you exactly how that happens, okay? Um, and I looked, and he had no assignments turned in. Like, the teacher came up with 15 points, apparently, just to give him so he could have some grades in there. He didn't turn in anything. And I was like, how did you, how did you think that would work? Like, how did you get yourself into that position? Sometimes it's sad, like you see sad stuff. Like, uh, I had to take a detour through Fort Worth the other day, and I was driving down, it was at night, and um, there was this, I went down the street and there were people sleeping on all of the sidewalks. Cause I had, and I'm looking at it, it was sad. I was like, how does that happen? Because they probably at some point had a house, um, you know, like, like most of us do, or an apartment or something, but now they're sleeping there. Like, how do you get there? Like, how does that happen? Um, it also works the other way, right? It works good. Like, you see somebody and you're like, man, I wish I could do what they do. Like, some of you, is, how could I get their grades? Or, like, I see people and they can, like, run long distances without collapsing, like I can't do that. If I run, you know that feeling in your side, like it feels like really, that pain? Okay, I, if I run more than a mile, I think my side would explode. I, I just, I can't run. I see people I'm like, that's incredible. How can you get there? How do you do that? I can't do it. Um, you see people and like, wow, that's, how did they get there? So here's the thing. The people that got somewhere good, like this guy I was in a room with last week. He's a multimillionaire, okay? And he's talking about how he makes money, okay? And he makes money like I make a water in the refrigerator. I mean, I go up and I'm like, shh, water, okay? He's just like, let's go make some money, okay? And he just, like, he can make millions, just no, no problem, okay? And like, how does he do that? So the people that, um, are, that accomplish these good things are in a place that they want in life. They have something. And the people that are places they don't want to be don't have it. Okay, so I want to teach you what this thing is. It's a very important thing that we all have or can have or whatever, and it's this. It's, it's called vision. Vision. Now, I'm not talking about your eyeball vision. That is a type of vision. Look at the person next to you and say, I see you. Okay, just making sure you're awake. Yeah. Yeah, so there's that kind of vision. Okay, I had a friend in college who was actually blind, so he didn't have vision. Um, his name was Jimmy. And his nickname was Blind Jimmy because his friends were not creative, <laughs> all right? So they're like, hey, Blind Jimmy. And uh, I was like, well, anyways, he was, he was not sour about it. He was a really cool guy. Um, however, it was amazing to me because he went to college by himself. Like, he lived in a dorm just like I did. He lived in a, and he went to class. He memorized everything. 
So he could walk out of his dorm and walk across campus down all the sidewalks. He would count the steps and he could just walk straight into class up to a desk and sit down and he couldn't see anything. Absolutely incredible. Now, the, the dorm that he lived in, they had a big living room with furniture in it and then a bunch of separate rooms. There was 10 separate rooms in this one thing. And the guys that he lived with were not very nice. So what they would do is they would rearrange the furniture in the main living room. And so he would walk in, and he had it memorized, so he would stop using his cane. And so he's just walking, all of a sudden, boop. And you hear Jimmy, like, fall, and then they're all, and he, he's like, guys, come on. Okay. Um, uh, I had a run-in with Jimmy one time, almost run-in. Uh, I was in uh, the music building, and I had gone into the bathroom, and I was in a stall. I don't want to get too. And, and all of a sudden, Jimmy comes into the stall, and he can't see that I'm there. And I'm like, Jimmy, I'm here. And he's like, oh, sorry. I was like, I don't want that. That was close. All right. And so uh, Jimmy, Jimmy did not have this vision, okay? And this, I mean, he, but he still did a lot of things because he had a different kind of vision. And um, I want to talk about a different kind of vision. And I think it's easier for me to give you an example of this kind of vision than it is maybe to define it for you. So let me just give you an example. When I was uh, a freshman, I was going into my freshman year of high school, my dad said to me, he said, if you get good grades, then you will easily get into college and you'll get a scholarship, and which I already knew. But then he said, on top of that, if you maintain good grades, I will, you won't have to get a job. I will pay for the stuff that you need. And I was like, that sounds good. And he goes, and if you can pay for college, I will buy you a car. And I was like, that sounds really good. So he's going to get me a car and all that. All I got to do is make good grades. So I got a vision for making good grades. I saw college, I saw I'm gonna get a scholarship, I'm gonna get a car, and I saw that. But then I even took it another step forward because I kinda of decided I wanted to dig it to the next level and I wanted to be in the top of my class, one, two, or three, somewhere around there, that was where I was going. I knew there was a couple other smart people so I didn't know if I could make number one. But I was like, let's just go for the top and I had this idea I was not gonna make a single B. Like, I make Bs on papers, but in a class, so I would never have a B. So this was my vision. Okay, this is what I saw, this is what I dreamed, okay, this is what I hoped for. And because of that, it, it changed the way I did some certain things. There were times when I wanted to just watch TV. I wanted to just play um, Nintendo 64. That was what we had, okay. Uh, that was a long time ago. I just wanted to do, um, you know, those things. Or I wanted to just go hang out, but I studied. Uh, I had a class, there was 32 people in the class. No one had an A. We were about halfway through the semester. There were zero A's in the class. Um, it was an AP class, and no one, no one was getting an A. The teacher did not like teaching. He was a coach and didn't want to teach, so he just thought he'd give everybody, you know, he wouldn't help us. And so, um, but what was my goal? What was my dream? What was my vision? To make all A's and never get a B. And so because of that, I did something I had never done before and nobody else was willing to do. And I'm going to tell you what I did, and you're going to go, I wouldn't do that. And I'm not telling you that you should do this. This is just what I did. I got the textbook, and I had never read a textbook. Anybody like me? Like, the textbook just sits in your house, and you never touch it. Okay, um, and so I got the textbook. I, saw, I read it every page of the history textbook and took every paragraph and wrote a sentence. You're like, why would you do that? I was the only person that made an A in the entire class. 32 people, one A. I got a 91, <laughs> and that's what it took to get the A. Now, I'm not telling you that that should be your vision, okay? I'm not telling you that at all. I'm telling you I had this vision, and so it changed the way I did the way that I behave. So vision, vision is something that directs us. It's something that helps us accomplish things, helps us get places. And I want to show you just this one simple verse, okay, in the Bible. This is written by a guy named Solomon. He's, like, really wise. So it's in the book of Proverbs. And it's, like, a wisdom book. It's supposed to give us, like, smart things so we can do, do better. And so I'm going to read just this one little verse to you about vision, okay? And this is what it says so we can understand vision a little bit better. It says, where there is no vision, so you don't have vision, the people are unrestrained. Now, when you first read that, another translation says they cast off restraint. So like they had it, but they threw it off, okay? But they are unrestrained, or they cast off restraint. Now, when I hear the word restrained or unrestrained, I think that sounds like a good thing. Like, wouldn't you want to be unrestrained? But let me give you an example of when you would understand why you would want to be. Um, the first major roller coaster I ever rode was Mr. Freeze, okay? Um, I was scared of roller coasters, but a girl got me to ride it. Long story. Anyways, actually, it's pretty short. She was cute. I rode it. Okay, so um, I, I was the first thing I did. And so, you, you know, when you ride Mr. Freeze, or any roller coaster for that matter, they have something that comes down called restraints, okay? <laughs> um, they're, they're restraints that are there. Now, um, they, on Mr. Freeze, you know, they come down like that, and they walk over, and they push on them, and they're like, down on you, and you're like, okay, that's not comfortable. But, so they push those down, and you got restraints. Now, I could think, 
you know, this would be a more comfortable ride without restraints. I want to be unrestrained, okay? Um, but it might work going forward. But, you know, Mr. Freeze goes up and then this way. And when you're going that way, you're <laughs> like riding up on those restraints. If you did not have them, it would be a whole different ride, okay? <laughs> um, and here's the thing. The people who made the ride had a vision, of lawsuits if they didn't have a restraining, okay, <laughs> of many dead people. They had a vision. In fact, I don't complain about the restraints. Why? Because I can see myself falling off of that thing. I don't like heights. And so I don't complain about the restraints. Restraints in that case are a good thing. And I know they're a good thing in this case because the next rest of the verse, it says this. But happy is he who keeps the law. And these are connected. Vision, unrestrained, and happy, okay? Now, I w- just so you know, happy is, is a good thing. Just make sure you understand. Happy is something that we want. In fact, I have never met a single person that didn't want to be happy. We all like different things. We all want different things. Some of you want Dr. Pepper. Some of you want Coke. Some of you want Mountain Dew. Okay? Some of you want chocolate. Some of you want vanilla. We all want happy. Okay? It doesn't matter who we are. We all want to be happy. I've never met anybody that didn't want to be happy. So he's saying, hey, these people are happy. Now, well, how are they connected? I'll just give you a little example on this particular verse and how they're connected. See, happy are those who keep the law. It is easy for me to do what God has commanded me to do, to live for him when I have a vision of what he wants for me. When I can actually understand and see that he wants good for me, that he wants, like, that he has a plan for my life that is going in a good direction. When I see how his laws are good, then it's easy for me to keep them. I won't be unrestrained. And because of that, it will result in me being happy. So vision helps us obey God, helps us to live for him. Vision is important. So when I was your age, I was sitting in a youth group like this, and I got vision for something. The youth pastor did a series on dating. And I usually was kind of like you. I was kind of like, eh, this regular one's not. But it was dating. I was like, this is interesting because I like girls, and uh, I want to learn how to do this. And I don't want to mess it up, and they're complicated, and I don't understand. So I was listening, and I got a vision, though. I got a vision for what it could be. Because I've seen a lot of mess and mistakes and problems, and I got this, this idea, this dream, this vision that I could someday get married to one person and have a lasting, happy, fun, passionate, good marriage. And that was something I, did, I wanted. It was something I began to hope for. I began to envision. I began to see. And because of it, guess what happened? I started to do some things differently than some other people would. I, would. I dated differently than some people would. I did think, like, there were some girls that came along that were really cute, but I didn't date them because they weren't going to, they weren't, they weren't following Jesus for, for one thing. And I wanted to be married to somebody that was following Jesus, so I wasn't going to date somebody that wasn't. I got a vision. I wanted, I wanted a girl that was godly. She loved Jesus, uh, was really sweet, not, not too moody, okay? And... And really hot, and I found it. All right, there she is, right back there. Okay, <laughs> my wife. Okay, and so I got that. Okay, and I waited. Oh, I had to wait, but I had a vision, and I was re- willing to wait and put stuff aside. No matter. What. AJ was asking me the other day. He said, "So how do you know when it's the one? Like, how do you know?" And because um, I told him, it was like when I just knew with Tracy, and um, and he was like, "So how do you know?" I was like, "Well, I, I don't know that I could tell you how to know it's the one. I could tell you when you'll." when you'll get an idea, okay? And so we started talking about like what he would envision, what he, what he sees. And, um, and so I said, well, number one, here are two, two really big things for you, I told him. Uh, number one, you need to be attracted to her and her attracted to you, okay? You don't want to date nobody you think's ugly, okay? Because that's not going to work. You're like, well, I can live with it, I guess. No, okay, don't do that. That's not going to work. So you got to be attracted to her, all right? And, and none, I don't even have to teach you that because that's the way you're going to do it, okay? And then I said, I told him, this is what, I'm not telling you this for you, I told him this for him. I said, when you see a girl standing in the worship service with both hands in the air with tears in her eyes because she's worshiping her heavenly father, then you know that's the one for you. You better ask her out before somebody else gets her. And he goes, okay, that's what I'll do. Because he wants to be a youth pastor. And I told him, you're not going to ever go any further as a youth pastor than your wife is willing to go. And so he needs a, a godly person. Now I'm telling you, I hope that your desire is to date somebody who loves Jesus with all their heart. And maybe you'll look for that before you date. But see, that's the vision for him. And then what that's going to mean? He's going to turn down some chances. Okay, and, I, it, and so because he's got vision, but it's going to take him somewhere because he has vision. Now, I'm going to just tell you what we're going to do next week. Next week, I'm going to help you understand how to understand God's vision for your life in some certain areas, like relationships and things, and then how you pursue that vision and how you get there. But that's next week. 
We're also going to have candy and donuts and stuff. But anyways, that's next week. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, because, and, but in the meantime, if you can't be here next week or whatever, let me just tell you this. You need to start talking to God and asking him, what is your vision for my life? What is your vision for me when it comes to relationships, when it comes to school, when it comes to a job, when it comes to my future, whatever the things are? What is your vision? How can I see what you have for me? Because trust me, he has something for you. You can discover that, and you need to begin to ask him for it, and he will reveal it to your heart. He will reveal it through his heart. He will reveal it to you. So you need to begin to seek that. I hope that you'll seek that. <clears throat> We're going to talk about how to do that next week. But <clears throat> in just a few minutes we have left, I want to talk about one specific vision. This is a vision that God has for all believers. Now, if you're not a believer, you're just going to hear what God has for believers. So you get, this might be just interesting for you to know, but this is what, what one vision, not the only vision, but a vision that Jesus has for every single person that would call himself or herself a follower of Jesus. And the way I'm going to show you what it is, um, Matt, there's, in the New Testament, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? At the very beginning. All four of these, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are written about Jesus. They're basically very similar, a lot of the same stories. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? And so we're going to look at something that Jesus said in all four. Now, they're slightly different because different people wrote, and they may even have been slightly different times. But all of them were at the very end, like the last chapter of each book. One of them is the next to last chapter. And it's like some of the very last things, in some cases the last things that they recorded that Jesus said. And we're even going to look at Acts. Jesus makes it into Acts chapter 1 and then he goes to heaven. Okay, so we're going to look at the last thing Jesus said there. So this is like the last. This is his vision. Okay, that's what I'm telling you. We're going to read them real fast. And what Jesus would tell us all if you're a believer. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to look at Jesus' vision for everybody, something wide. Then we're going to come down, we're going to talk about our vision as a youth group and how we fulfill this vision, our vision as a youth group, and then a role for you within this whole, this whole thing. Get it? So we're going to down to you. Okay, so we'll start all Christians. Okay, this is a Christian, whether you're here or in China or in Africa or wherever you live, it's for all Christians. Okay, so here's Jesus. All of these are Jesus talking. Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, what? Go. go. Okay, yeah. We what? Go. Yeah, thank you. Therefore, go and make disciples. Of all nations. Go and make disciples. So he wants, he says, this is what I want you to do. This is my vision. Go and make disciples. Here is Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 16. Go. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. What does he want us to do again? He says, I want you to go and tell people the good news. I want you to go and tell people about who I am. I want you to go and help people get to know me. That's Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke. This is what is written. The Christ will suffer, Jesus talking. The Christ will suffer and raise from the dead, rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached. Okay, it's going to be said to people. In his name to all nations, beginning in, at Jerusalem, next verse, you are my witnesses. What is a witness? A witness is someone that goes and tells other people what they've seen and what they've heard. He's saying, hey, you're going to go and you're going to tell people what you have seen and heard. I know it's word a little different than the others. And here's John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. What are you going to do? You're going to go. Okay. Do you catch something here? He wants people to be witnesses. He wants them to go. It's his vision for all believers. But you, this is Acts, the last thing he says, right before it says, and then he ascended to heaven. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He says, you're going to be all witness. A witness is someone that goes and tells what they have seen and heard. All through, we see what God's vision, what Jesus's vision for his disciples. Jesus' vision for his disciples is this, that people who love him would help other people love him. This is Jesus. If you're a disciple, this is his vision for you. You don't even have to wonder. His vision is that people who love him would help other people love him. Yeah, he's got a vision maybe for your relationships and for your career and for some other things in your life, but this is a part of what his vision for all of us is, is that if we love him, we're going to help other people love him. That we're going to help somebody that doesn't know who he is get to know who he is. He loves them. Do you realize that there are so many people that you know, you know them, and they have no idea that Jesus died for them so that their sins can be forgiven. They think that church is about you're wrong and you're bad. No, they don't know that Jesus loves them and wants a relationship with them. And who is supposed to do that? Tell them the difference? That's us. We're the ones that's supposed to share it with them. So, everybody, this is everybody that would call themselves a follower of Jesus, that people who love him would help others love him. So now let's take it down a little bit. I want to talk just about our youth group because there's a lot of ways that you can fulfill that. 
But we as a group, if this is your youth group especially, but, and if you're new here, I just want you to know this is what we are trying to accomplish. I want to come down to the next level and how that we carry that out. Okay, so our vision amplifies vision. Okay, we got Jesus' vision. Okay, here's amplifies vision, which is a part of that. It is this, and so most of you have heard this. If you've been here for very long, I say it all the time. We want to create a place where the unconnected get connected. We want to create a place, we want this to be a place where people that are not connected to God or to his people get connected. Now, if you were recently saved, like in the last couple of years, or, or, or even like in junior high, high school, I can probably tell you part of your story, because it's almost the same, this part is almost the same with everyone who's saved as a teenager or later, okay? Um, and that is this, that you were not close to God, you didn't know him or, or you were not connected with him, we could say it that way. And you got connected with someone or a group of people who were. You were a friend with somebody who believed, or you were friends with some people who believed, and over time, something happened, and because of your relationship with them, you began a relationship with God. I know that's the case because almost every single testimony video we ever film, and y'all, we show those up here a lot, every single one of those, almost all of them, they say somebody's name. This person invited me. This person talked to me about God. This person showed me. And whether it was someone just living their life or that. And yes, your story, most of your story is that. That there was a person who led you that way, that connected you. And so what we want to be is a place where people are connected. Can I give you the vision, okay? That anybody, everybody that walks in here, walks in those doors or walks into this building, would feel like the people in that place care that I'm there. The people in that place are different. They, they wanted me to be there. I felt like I might belong there. And maybe that hasn't been your experience here. But I'm telling you, that's our vision. I don't know that it will all ever get there. That I would like it that every single person that walks in. I don't know if that's possible. But my dream, my vision is that every single person walks in and says, you know what, I don't know if I believe in Jesus yet. I don't know if I'm ready to do that whole, like, moving back and forth when they're doing it. I don't know about that, okay. I don't know if I'm ready to do that. But I, those people are different. Those people are really nice. Those people seem to, like, care. Those people seem to have, like, something about them that I want to go back. I want to go back and experience that again because the people, and they feel connected. See, I believe it works like this. We connect with God's people, and eventually we connect with him. And so uh, that's what we want to do. We want to be a place where people feel like they can connect with us, and ultimately they'll connect with God. And I've seen it happen over and over again. In fact, um, my favorite thing, that ever happens is when I get to get out my favorite, my favorite marker. Do you have a favorite marker? No, because you're not a kid. Okay, but I am. Um, <laughs> I have a favorite marker. Here's my favorite marker. It sits in my office on the little shelf thing like this. And this marker has one purpose, and it is to write on these. These are our youth calendars. Many of you have one. Okay, so um, here is, this is the last three months. I got August, September, October. Here is August. And right here, I wrote... 22 salvations, because 22 people gave their life to Jesus in this, in this youth room in August. Here is September, and I wrote, on the 12th of September, five people walked to the back of the room and decided they wanted to follow Jesus and make him the Lord of their life. And here's October. Um, I don't know if you know this, we had an encounter about two weeks ago, and somebody got saved at encounter. Isn't that pretty cool? And then the week, Wednesday before that, another person gave their life to Jesus. And this is the reason that we are here. The reason that we are here is so that I can get my red marker out and I can write it on. That's the reason I write it on here because that's what I celebrate. And that's what is exciting to me is when I see that happen. This is somebody and some people who were connected by some other people. Because we were a place where we're helping the unconnected get connected. We're connecting them to us and we're connecting them to God. I heard this stat. I wouldn't plan on saying it. It just popped into my head so I can say it. Um, they say that if, if somebody doesn't have seven friends in a church that they won't stay. That within a year, they'll be gone. And so what do we need to do? We need to help everybody have seven friends. It may take a little time, but within a year, we got to get them seven friends. If you don't have seven friends, let's, let's get you going. Let's get you connected, all right? But we want to this thing, we want to be a place where people are connected. Okay, so we've got this, this, and so now let's go down. So we, we've got all people. Everybody is helping people know that God loves them. We, we want to be a place where the unconnected get connected. So what is your role? Okay, now, now I'm talking to those of you that would now call this your youth group. Okay, like if, if you're new, maybe this will be you. But if you would say, okay, if someone asks you, hey, where do you go to church? Or, hey, what's your youth group? You would say, Amplify, Grace Church, that's where I, that's it. Okay, this is you, I'm talking to you. 
Your role here is this, to be a connector. Be a connector. I need you to be a connector, to be somebody that is connecting other people. Um, You have to be connected to connect. Does that make sense? You have to be connected to connect. So um, I want to ask you to do something. Now, this is many of you already. So if it's already you, keep doing it. But if this has been your group, and this is a lot of you, you come and you come quite a bit, and you're here, and you experience it, and this, but I want to ask you to try something. For the rest of this school year, would you try going in 100%? Just, I, it will change your life. Ask those that are. If you go in 100%, and this is what I mean 100%, that it's not just a Wednesday night every now and then. It is I go on Wednesdays, I go on Sundays, I'm going to go on the forward retreat. When they sign up for discipleship groups, I'm going to be on the list. If they have some activity, I want to try and be a part of it. I want, to, I want to truly connect. I want to become a part. I want to be all in. And what will happen is, number one, you will connect. And you will feel like you have the closest friends that you've ever had, which is really my dream for you, is that you would say, where's your best friends? They're at my church. That's where my best friends are. And you, would, you will have that, but then something else will happen. You'll be so connected, you will be able to then start connecting others. Uh, I'll give you a, a visual idea of what that works like. So you have to be connected to connect. So when I was in high school, we went to Slitterbond, went to Slitterbond. They got this lazy river that is like the longest lazy river. It's not even a lazy river because it has like fast parts. And so... Um, we started out, I was, our band was there, and five of us got in a chain, right? And we just held on to each other like this, okay? And the first person, I don't know why, he was all energetic. He just started, like, go, like going. Like, he got his feet down, and he was just going. We were going fast, like, bla- blazing past people through the Lazy River. And we would start to pass other band members. And so we would go, I remember passing someone saying, hey, join us. And I reach out, and they grabbed me, and we pull them over, and they'd hook onto our, my raft, and we got another one, and we're just going. By the time we got down, we had like 25, 30 people in this massive chain, just like taking up the lazy river. And, but here's the, here's the thing. I could not go, hey, join us, if I wasn't connected. But because I was connected, I was able to take somebody else and connect them, and they connected somebody else, and it goes like that. And um, I want you to be connected. Why? So that you can experience this, watching one of your friends give their life to Jesus. It's one of the coolest things. In fact, when I look around here, it's so funny because so many of you, I can see the chain that goes back because you got invited by this person who got invited by this person who got invited. And it goes up, and I can think like, like five, six years ago, the first person who invited, and it led to some of you being here. Um, it, it's pretty crazy. And um, it's a chain that happens when people get connected. So I'd like you to get connected, and I'd like you to be a connector. Um, and that's what our youth group is about. So if you're new, now you know what we're about. <laughs> that's what we want you to be. That's what we want you to experience. Um, so we're going to end tonight, though, and give you a chance for prayer for your vision. And uh, because I know some of you, you are in an area, and you're one of those places you don't want to be where I kind of, I mean, you don't weigh 1,000 pounds. Uh, nope, no one here. Okay, so uh, you don't weigh 1,000 pounds, but you're in one of those places where you didn't want to be, okay? Maybe there's something going on with your family. There's something going on with your, some situation. I don't know. And you don't even have vision for what it could be like. You, you can't even see how it could get better. And I want you to pray with somebody that God will give you vision on how you're going to get out of it. That he can begin to let you see that it's not going to always be that way. That it can get better. That he can work. And just let somebody pray with you. If you need prayer for anything that's going on in your life, in just, for just a second, we're going to stand. And there will be people at the back of the room to pray with you. We're going to pray for just a couple of minutes and then we'll be done. But take that chance and let somebody believe with you for what you're dealing with. Father, I thank you that you give us vision and you guide us and direct us. I pray that every single person here would begin to discover what you have for them. And I pray that we would walk in it. I pray that we would be a youth group, a church that connects the unconnected. In Jesus' name, amen.